Salutations and welcome, friends, to another Trust the Prophets Preakness Stakes Spotlight Series. And we are here to talk about a horse that might be a little bit of a long shot, the horse Perform. Very excited to talk about this horse. But before we get there, I'm your host for this episode. My name is Matthew DeSantis. You can find me on Twitter at the handle at failed to menace. Well, make sure to press that subscribe button here on YouTube to get all of our great content that we have on Trust the Profits. Listen, folks, we'd have a lot more than just the Triple Crown. We have handicapping shows every single week. Colin Sheehan's going to new tracks all the time and doing doubling down and bringing on guests. I'm doing cap in the card every single week where I go for an entire card, give you my top pick, my top value play for every single race. Doing that at different tracks every single week, not just those associated with the Triple Crown or the biggest stakes races on the card. We're going to hit smaller tracks. We're going to places like Hawthorne and Laurel and, and Colonial Downs. And like I said, maybe those secondary tracks sometimes and giving you some great content there. We're also doing live betting Thursday nights in the lounge. We have full field rundowns all the time. We got the win play show that keeps you up to date with all the horse racing and handicapping news that you could possibly want. So listen, if you are a fan of horse racing, if you're a fan of betting, if you're a fan of the, the sport, you got to make sure to press that subscribe button because Trust the Profits is your one-stop shop for everything you need for horse racing and handicapping. Now, make sure to like this video, comment below with what your chances, what you think the chances that perform is going to pull off quite the upset to win this year's 148th running of the Preakness Stakes. Well, listen, let's talk about this horse that I know a lot of people are, you know, kind of thinking is and also Rand and kind of an afterthought. This horse is not an afterthought, in my opinion. I like this horse quite a bit. And that picture that is there of Perform, it was taken when he wins the Tessio Stakes last time out at Laurel Park. And folks, if you didn't watch that race, go back on YouTube and watch that race. That is one of the most amazing and impressive finishes I've seen a horse make this year. Uh, just absolutely thrilling and will make you sell your stock in Red Route 1 when you see what this horse did coming from the back against that field. Now, you could always argue about the competition. I get it, but that was a really, really good performance there from a horse for Suge McGahee. But let's talk a little bit more about this probable field for the 148th Preakness Stakes. And listen, we have a lot of interesting horses here. Obviously, Perform is probably the least well-known of these horses, maybe along with Chase the Chaos. There's some rumors that a horse like Henry Q might draw into this field. Some instant coffee might also draw in as well. Obviously was on the Derby trail, didn't qualify, might end up coming in for this particular race. But when you look at this race, you do see a little bit of a lack of speed. So confidence game is a forwardly placed horse. First mission is a forwardly placed horse. Blazing, uh, but national treasure should be a little bit more of a stalking horse. It'll probably be happy to sit third early on. Now, if a horse like Henry Q comes into the race, now you have another pace presence in the race. Now, maybe that pace gets notched up a little bit uh, in terms of, you know, how fast they go in that opening quarter and opening half. And maybe that opens things up for what looks to be a lot of mid pack and closing horses. Perform is certainly one of those. Red Route One being another one of those. Chase the Chaos is one of those. Blazing Sevens is one of those. Mage is one of those. So there's a lot of these mid pack and closing horses in this race that are going to need for the pace to be pretty fast on the front end if they want to get there on the back end and get there to win this Preakness Stakes. So something to keep in mind with regards to uh, the pace and the setup of this particular race. But let's talk a little bit more about perform here. And this is a Suge McGahee horse. This is not, uh, this is a horse coming from a serious barn for a serious trainer. And one that I always really have a soft spot for. I always like Suge, uh, and always like his horses. I think he's a really good horseman in terms of he gives horses time to recover. He lets horses run into shape, which I know from a handicapping standpoint can be maddening sometimes in terms of knowing when a Suge horse is ready to fire off the bench versus when it's not. But this is just one of a, yet another one of the good magic horses in this race. Good magic, of course, also the sire of Kentucky Derby winner Mage, as well as Blazing Sevens. So there's three good magic Colts in this race. You have a tail of a Cotty, dam underneath, you definitely like, I, I like that tail of a Cotty pedigree actually quite a bit. It, it has a little bit of speed there. Uh, winner of the Cigar Mile, tail of the Cat going back a little further. There, there are some things to like there. Leslie's Lady, a, a horse I always liked. Uh, so there, there's a lot of things going back a few generations that I like in that underneath pedigree uh, quite a bit. Uh, and then even, you know, obviously the good magic up top, hard to argue with. Now the jockey here, Fergal Lynch. I'll be interested to see what Suge does 
for this particular race because Fergal Lynch, that was the first time I believe Fergal was on this horse was the last time out. And I will say Fergal gave this horse one of the best rides you will ever see. He's a mid-Atlantic jockey. He knows Pimlico well. He obviously runs Laurel all the time. Fergal's a really, really good jockey. Like I said, knows that knows this mid-Atlantic circuit like the back of his hand. I'll be interested if Suge lets him on the stay on the mount. He might not. He might replace him with another jockey. Obviously, he works with a lot of those jockeys coming out of the New York, Florida colony. Irad, Jose, Luis Saez. I mean, so he, you know, he uses some rotation of those guys pretty often. So it'll be interesting to see if he brings on another jockey to replace uh, Fergal Lynch. But Fergal did nothing wrong last time out with this horse. That is for sure. But let's talk a little bit about perform. And you might look at this past performance and go, Matthew, why, why are we doing a spotlight on this horse? Listen, I know it took him not once, not twice, not three times, but that's right, six times to break his maiden. I know that. And then he breaks his maiden to Tampa and then goes up to Laurel and wins a black type stakes race in the Federico Tessio in really thrilling fashion. So has now come with back-to-back -back performances. Here's the other thing I want you to look at. Look at where those maiden special weight races were run. Belmont. Saratoga, Keeneland, Churchill, Gulfstream. He was running in big time circuits. This is a horse. Also, if you look and where his finish was, he was running, you know, second, fourth, third, sixth, fourth. I mean, he was never that bad in any of these races. Now, here's the other kicker for a horse like Perform is that who was he running against? Oh, well, guess what? In that January 18th race at Gulfstream Park, he ran against Mage. Oh, that's a pretty good horse. In debut at Belmont Park, he ran against a horse, Lost Ark, a really nice top pletcher horse that uh, ran in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He also has run against horses like Krupe. He's run against horses uh, like Ray's Kane. He's run against multiple, he's run against a horse like Disarm. He ran against multiple horses that were in the Kentucky Derby, including the Kentucky Derby winner. Okay. So he's run in big time spots before. And he's run in, he's run against horses that are very strong in terms of what they've done after that main special weight race. So he's been running against excellent competition, excellent competition. And now he comes back and finally breaks his maiden in a little bit of a softer spot at Tampa Bay, as opposed to running up against the monsters that he's been running against on the various circuits in New York and Kentucky, and then down in Florida with Mage and Bourbon Resolve, who's a really nice horse who came back to win next time out as well. So, finally gets a little bit of class relief, if you will, at Tampa, then immediately follows that up with a big-time performance at the Tessio. There is a lot to like about this horse, who's going to be a huge price on the board. Let, let, let me be very clear. He's going to be a huge price. The, the run that he made at the Tessio, though, was Rich Strike-esque. He was, I mean, that was a beautiful job by Fergal weaving through horses, but it showed you that horse has a lot of guts too. That horse does not mind going through tight spots. That horse can absolutely weave through horses. That is a brave horse. A lot of horses would have balked going through some of the spots that Fergal got this horse through. So the fact that Perform got there and finished and got home at the end, I think really said a lot about this horse. Obviously a huge step up. Maiden special weight, now wins the stakes race, now running in the Preakness stakes. This is a huge step for the horse, understandable, but it's going to be fresh coming off. You know, it's going to be by a regular rotation. Hasn't run in a month by, by the time the Preakness is. So is going to be in a good spot for this particular race. Do I think he's a win threat? No. Logistically, I don't think he is a win threat in this particular race. Am I including him on my vertical tickets? Absolutely. He is going to be a horse that I am including on my verticals, probably more in my trifectas, but I will be including perform in this race. This is a horse that has run against great competition and has not run poorly against that competition in the maiden special weight ranks. And then as soon as he finally breaks his maiden, he shows his medal and wins a stakes race and does it in a really impressive fashion. I think this is an ascending horse. Should takes time with these horses. The pedigree is there to suggest this horse absolutely can get the job done. Would I be shocked if he wins? A little bit, but I would not be flabbergasted at all. I I, I would be, uh, you know, I would I would go, wow, that was quite an effort from him to be able to do that. But I would I be shocked if he hits the board? Absolutely not at all. He's a horse I really am like going to like to use, I think, at a big price in this particular spot. So that's just my take. 
The other three guys on Trust the Profits think I'm absolutely crazy for liking this horse. So maybe you do too. And if you do, let me know in the comments below if you think Perform has any sort of a shot in this year's Preakness Stakes. Like this video. Make sure to give me a follow on Twitter at the handle at Fail the Menace. Make sure to throw us a follow here on Trust the Profits on YouTube. Until next time, friends, my name is Matthew DeSantis. Wishing you a great and profitable day at the races and reminding you that it's now post time.